Okay, this is a module on the big five personality factors. And so this is really trait theory that we talked about in the more general discussion of personality. So the goals of this module, by the end of it, you should take an inventory to gain insight into your standing in the big five. You should be able to list and describe the big five personality factors and be able to generate examples of how people would behave who have high and low scores on each of the big five. And I'll ask you questions in this module, but you don't have to turn those in unless I've otherwise instructed you to do so. Okay, before we get started, let's take an assessment of the Big Five, and all you have to do is type Big Five Personality Test into your browser, and it should take you to a link where you can take an assessment. So take a moment to just stop the video and do that now. And again, it's Big B-I-G 5 F-I-V-E Personality Test. So, now that you know you're standing on the Big Five, let's look at all of them in uh, detail. To begin with, let's watch a YouTube video that gives a pretty good description of each of the big five, and then we'll kind of uh, define them. So go to YouTube and type in the big five personality traits. First one's introversion, extroversion. So um, the classic definition of this, introverts seek out stimulation within themselves by doing quiet activities that are intellectual or reflective, like reading or just kind of philosophizing, thinking about things. And you might look like you're shy to other people. Extroverts tend to seek stimulation outside themselves, so they like seeking out crowds and lots of company. Conscientiousness or impulsiveness. Conscientiousness is a person who's responsible, they persevere, you can count on them, they're tidy, they're disciplined, versus the opposite. Someone who's impulsive is more in, uh, undependable, they're uh, more likely to give up easily, they may seem careless or a little impulsive to other people. Neuroticism versus emotional stability. Neuroticism uh, refers to the extent to which a person is uh, anxious, negative, they're kind of contemptuous of others, have a lot of negative emotions, versus emotional stability, which is being more happy and stable. Agreeableness versus antagonism. Agreeable people are friendly and cooperative. They're just really good to be around. They tend to be such a positive influence in groups. In contrast, antagonistic people tend to be abrasive and uh, suspicious, jealous, irritable, so they tend to um, cause conflict. Openness to experience versus resistance to new experience. Openness to experience is the extent to which you're curious, imaginative, questioning. So if you're open to experience, you may like to make diverse friends. You may love travel. You like new experiences, even new restaurants. Resistance to new experience is somebody who's more conforming and predictable and somebody who's really uncomfortable with novelty. A friend of mine told me about a really dear friend of hers who ate exactly the same lunch for just years and years, and he was very comfortable um, doing that. That doesn't mean overall he's resistant to new experience, but definitely in the domain of lunch, I think we can say, yeah, definitely he was a little resistant to new experience there. So, just as a discussion, these traits do tend to be stable over time, and as I mentioned in the general lecture, traits predict best in weak situations where there aren't a lot of rules for behavior. They don't predict as well where there are a lot of rules, um, and those situations where there are tons of rules are called strong situations. I hope you enjoyed this lecture, and especially hope you enjoyed finding out more about yourself in terms of your personality traits.